Onward and upward, another Q&A on a Saturday. Hope you're doing well. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. I have a bunch of trail shoes sitting right here to talk about with all of you. That's right, that is the focus of this week's Q&A. And yes, I pulled all of the questions from last week's uh, question of the day on YouTube, and then I also posted it on Twitter this morning. So that's where we're pulling these questions from. Let's dive in. Brooks on Twitter is asking, I'm running my first Pikes Peak Ascent this year. Congrats, Brooks. That's exciting. I'm thinking about picking up a pair of Saucony trail shoes since their road shoes have worked well for me. Should I go with one of the existing on the market that you have reviewed or wait for the release of new versions in June? Oh, Brooks, good question. So where is it? I said, there it is. So here's the Saucony Mad River TR one of my favorite trail shoes from 2019 because it uh, it was uh, versatile. I could use it in a lot of different ways, pretty lightweight. And Brooks, I'm going to say that now it's not categorized as a racing shoe, but I think this is not a bad option. It's, it's light enough. It's not crazy heavy, which trail shoes are known to be sometimes. I think this Mad River TR could pull off the Pikes Peak Ascent. I think the, the lugs on the bottom would do the trick, absolutely. Now, another shoe from Saucony is the Switchback ISO, which is definitely more of the racing, uh, it falls into the racing category from Saucony. So you, if you want to wait for that shoe, this is the ISO 2. I'm not exactly sure when the ISO 3 will be released. Maybe it is in June, uh, but, oh, and again, Brooks, I don't know, for those that don't know, the Pikes Peak Ascent is a 13 mile race up a huge, a 14,000 foot mountain here in Colorado, gaining about 7,000 7, feet of vertical gain. So Brooks, um, I don't know what your goals are exactly, but frankly, I would, I would put this in the running as a possibility, especially if your foot is a little wider, which I think the Mad River TR uh, can accommodate a wider foot, okay? I don't know if that exactly answers your, uh, your question, but the Switchback ISO series could also work for you, but again, it's a little more aggressive. Good question from Brooks on Twitter. Here we go, uh, from Kurt, and I believe this was also Twitter. How do you determine how aggressive of a trail shoe to purchase, i.e. Solomon versus New Balance. Uh, and he gave the example of the New Balance Hero. Is it better to err on the side of aggressive? That is from Kurt. That is a great question. So here we go. Let's go, let's go the most aggressive I can find in the lineup and possibly the least aggressive. So we've got the Innovate Mudclaw G260 here on the your right. And on the left is the Nike Wild Horse 5, which is a little more tame. Um, so Kurt, Kurt, Kurt. As far as aggressive, um, you know, <laughs> the easy answer, Kurt, is how much mud is around your house? How much, um, how much mud, how much snow, how many, um, yeah, like <laughs> basically how soft is the surf are the surfaces that you're running through? Also, uh, connecting back to Pikes Peak uh, for, for Brooks is that the Pikes Peak Ascent, the trail is, uh, is kind of pebbles, little, little pebbles. So it's a little loosey-goosey up there. Uh, so as far as lug depth, I choose to race in the Solomon S Lab Scent. This is the seven. I will likely race in the eight this upcoming year, but this is the Solomon S Lab Scent 7 SG. That SG stands for soft ground, meaning the lug depth is are, is deeper. So you can you can bite into the ground a little bit better. Uh, whereas they do make a, a, a model of this shoe that is not SG, so the lug depth is, is this is probably, I think these are five to six millimeter, and the non-SG version is around like that two to three millimeter. Uh, so, to answer your question, Kurt, um, it depends on, yeah, how much bite you need in your, you know, as far as the surface that you're running on. Also though, keep in mind, if you're going over rocks, and it's a rock, like going up the 14ers here in Colorado, it can be rocky and you don't necessarily want, uh, and I'm talking rocks that are more solid, almost like, not boulders, but more solid rocks. You may not want that lug depth that is crazy because these lugs might be pressing, will be pressing into the bottom of your foot just a little bit. Uh, so, Kurt, if I had to choose, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my straight. If I had to choose, I would go with probably a little less aggressive um, because then the shoe, I think, becomes a little more versatile, like the Wild Horse 5, for example. Uh, but if it's a mud fest, if it's crazy out, uh, leaves that are, are starting to, uh, yeah, fall on the trail, and it's just, it's just a crazy trail, yeah. 
I would go with a little more lug depth. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. That's a, that's a big in-depth question. I love it though. Okay, moving on to Carl on Twitter. Do you recommend different shoes for different terrain? A lot of trails in the Northeast are Rocky and Rudy. I run these trails in, in the Brooks Cascadia, but I'm getting near replacement time. And this kind of connects to what I just said to Kurt, is um, do you recommend different shoes for different terrain? Absolutely. And, um, you know, and also different terrain and different distances that you'd like to run. So certainly a little more midsole protection like you will find in the Hoka Speed Go 4 or the Hoka Evio Speed Goat. Definitely a lot more midsole protection for those longer runs. Oh, if I was racing, I'm kind of sad that I'm not racing a 50K in 2020, most likely. Yeah, I don't. it's not on the calendar. Uh, but I would probably choose the Hoka Evio Speed Goat if I was racing a 50K, most likely, uh, because of that midsole protection. So yes, I will say, Kurt, definitely uh, make sure that the uh, trail shoe has a rock plate if you're going over rocks and roots. Most of you already know that, but some trail shoes don't have a rock plate. And a rock plate, if you don't know, is a piece of plastic, basically. Um, most of them are plastic or hard, hard rubber that is in between or embedded right inside that midsole to protect your foot from the rocks. Oh, I'm trying to think of the shoe. Oh gosh, I, oh, there, was, there was a shoe in 2019. I'm not gonna think of it right now that did not have a rock plate. And I don't think it was from Solomon. It was from Solomon. The Solomon, um, not the Speed Cross, but the Supercross. The Solomon Supercross 4, I think it was, and it did not have a rock plate, and I could feel every single rock on the journey. Okay, moving on to Sam on Twitter. Where I live, there are a lot of soft trails. Is there a good minimalist shoe that you recommend for softer ground? So Sam, um, man, that's tough. The only, the two companies I thought of immediately were Merrill and Topo. Okay, I just thought the camera had stopped. It's still rolling, thankfully. Okay, the two, Sam, are Merrill and Topo, all right? They make a lot of minimalist shoes, Merrill and Topo, but also check out the Ultra King MT2, which is actually more of a racing shoe. But as you know, racing shoes are a little more streamlined and less of a midsole, so check those out. Check that one out as well. But uh, Merrill and Topo would be my go-to to check out. All right, hope that helps, Sam. Moving on to Grant on Twitter. I struggled with shin splints for a long time. I'm sorry, man. Oh, I, don't, I don't know how long, but that is a tough one. Instead of recommending a specific shoe or brand, are there build characteristics or other things I should look for slash avoid when shopping? I think what he's, you know, uh, uh, components of a running, of a trail running shoe to avoid or to look for to help overcome shin splints. I put this in here, maybe I shouldn't have put this in here, in here because I don't have a ton of experience with shin splints, grants, and of course, I'm not a doctor. I've had shin splints once in my life. And what made it go away for me was definitely reducing the mileage. You've probably done all of this. Gentle massage. I do remember doing quite a bit of icing. That seemed to help me a lot, is icing. Um, I actually did a 25 mile race with shin splints. So mine weren't severe, but I was signed up for it and I just wanted to do it, so I did it. And uh, so as far as a shoe to look for, oh man, Grant, I'm not a doctor, but I would lean toward a shoe that has a lower drop. That, so an Ultra, okay, which are zero drop running shoes. Basically, my thesis is that you need to continue to stretch out your entire kinetic chain, so from your lower back all the way down to your toes, but especially that calf and soleus area and the Ultra lineup, like, um, here we go, we've got the Ultra, this is the, uh, is this the, is this the Timp? No, yeah, this is the Timp 1.5, Ultra Timp 1.5 would be actually a solid option. Uh, especially for trail running. So Ultra Timp 1.5 would be my thought just to help you stretch out that calf and soleus. Good question. Oh man, moving on. Here we go. Uh, Jacob asks, I know it is an older shoe, but have you ever tried the Hoka Torrent? If not, do you plan to? Jacob, I have not. Maybe in 2020. Should I? Let me know down in the comments who is a fan of the Hoka Torrent and why. Convince me to get it and maybe I will. Like trail season is coming up. I'm starting to build up that running shoe rotation for this fine new year. I guess we're in February already, but that's, uh, it is still the new year in my mind. Okay, moving on to Dr. Funk 1216. I love the name. Uh, this is on YouTube. It seems that carbon fiber plates are here to stay for road shoes. What are your thoughts on carbon fiber trail shoes? And do you think it's on the horizon? 100%. This actually came up, I think, last week as well. 
100%. Trail shoes, I'm actually shocked there is, that I know of, there's no trail shoe with a carbon fiber plate. Will it help runners? I think so. I don't know why it wouldn't. And um, I'm just trying to imagine, Jim Walmsley, Western States 100, I was out there filming it last year. He won that race, set a new course record in this shoe, the Hoka EVO Speedgoat for a 100 mile race. Uh, I would not be shocked if Hoka would consider putting a carbon fiber plate in this shoe. I don't see, there's really no reason that I can think of scientifically why a carbon fiber plate would not be working for people on the trails. So I love it, Dr. Funk in the house. <laughs> Great question. It's on the horizon in my humble opinion. Okay, moving on. Question, I believe number eight. This is from Brent on YouTube. Um, which Solomon race shoe for trails uh, would I, I guess, buy between 15K and 25K? He's never tried Solomon yet. Heard they are good, but not a lot of cushion for longer races. That is from Brent. It's a good question. Um, that 15K, you know, okay. Keep everything I say a little bit with a grain of salt. Like I'm trying to rock and roll when I'm at the starting line. That's why, uh, even though, okay, it's gonna be interesting. So I'm racing the Pikes Peak Marathon, which is a 26 mile race this upcoming summer. So up and down Pikes Peak. At this point, I am leaning toward the Solomon S Lab Sense 8 SG, but at the same time, there's not a ton of midsole protection there. So you have to ask yourself, Brent, how beat up do you wanna be after that race? For me, Pikes Peak is a peak race in 2020, but if you're doing a train through race, meaning you have other races coming up in the future, you might wanna protect your legs a little bit. So another yes would be the Solomon S Lab uh, Ultra lineup, okay? This is the Ultra one, but they also have the Ultra two out, which is a, uh, a streamlined upper. It's, it's, a, it's a lighter option. So the Solomon S Lab Ultra two, I think would definitely be a good option if you're interested in Solomon uh, for that more of that 25K distance okay good question from brent there you go okay moving on to landon he asks uh hey seth i'm in middle school but he does uh, club cross country and track awesome i was wondering how you feel about wearing trail shoes for cross country races races like the solomon sense 8 2 or solomon sense ride 2 uh as cross country spikes tend to hurt my ankles at my age cross country races are three to four k thanks and love from canada landon thank you for watching from canada Landon, you're in middle school. I would say protect your legs, protect your feet. I think you have all the time in the world to let your body develop, to let your leg strength develop, to let your ankle strength develop. I think it's brilliant to uh, race in a trail shoe in middle school cross country. I think, I think it's awesome. And down the road, maybe when you're a sophomore or a junior or, and you do practice in these spikes, these cross country spikes and track spikes, but especially cross country spikes and your body will be more um, able to receive because it is harder. I get it, man. It's, it's harder on the body when you spike up because those spikes kind of, they force you up on your toes. Now I will say spikes, I think they do help you run faster. I will put that out there. But at this point, Landon, I think it's brilliant. Uh, I'm trying to think, well, this is almost the S Lab, um, <laughs> Solomon S Lab, um, oh my gosh, Sense 7 SG is almost like a cross country spike. Like it has some, it, uh, this could be a decent option, Landon, because it's not crazy aggressive as far as putting you up on your toes no matter what. It, there's still enough midsole protection there that you could pull this off in a cross country race. Landon, great question, and keep trucking up there in Canada. Oh, I love it. I love the, the young runners out there. Okay, moving on to Graham. Here we go. Last question. Thanks for a great video once again. A quick question. What considerations do you make other than cushioning for ultra distance shoes? Is cushioning the number one priority when choosing shoes for an ultra? Uh, distance race, or are there other aspects that you would consider before getting into the cushioning? That is from Graham. Graham, great question. Let me take a quick drink here. So, I would say cushioning is high on the priority list. And <clears throat> I wish when I would have attempted my first 100 miler that I honestly, this was like two years ago, that I would have known more about shoes. Even two years ago, like I'm learning alongside you guys. Like I've learned a lot in the last two years, but I wish I would have been a little more uh, acquainted with running shoes. So if I was running a hundred miler now, there's a good chance I would run in the EVO Speed Go. And it's not just because Jim Walmsley set a course record at Western States in this shoe. Like 
it's a special shoe. It re I think it's a really special shoe. Um, but one other consideration, Graham, I think would be, depending on the time of year you're racing, Graham, is a couple things. Okay, uh, ventilation. So how breathable is the shoe? When you're running for miles and miles and miles, like if it's hot out, your feet are going to get hot. You don't want your feet to get too hot, um, I, you know, leading to blisters. Uh, and then also, okay, and the, and the second variable I would look for is um, um, draining, basically. Like, can the, is the shoe able to wick away moisture? Again, if you're running for 50 miles, 100 miles, like long ultra races, and you're, maybe you're crossing creeks, okay? There's actually probably a good chance you're crossing creeks. I want to make, make sure the shoes can drain out water. That's another cool feature of the Saucony Mad River TR is that this shoe is literally, the, the name says it all, the Mad River TR. It's actually designed for you to drill holes in the bottom of the outsole so water can drain out of this shoe. Amazing. I love this shoe. It's so innovative. Uh, but, um, so those would be two factors. It, does it wick away moisture well? Does it get rid of water out of the shoe well? And then is it is it pretty breathable, especially if you're racing in the summertime, all right? Sound good? Oh, thanks for being here. I hope that helps. We covered quite a bit. Oh, what a day, what a day. Okay, question of the day for next week's Q&A. We're diving in. We're, I'm not afraid. We're diving in. All about just carbon fiber plates. It's such a hot topic right now in the running shoe world. So, okay, question of the day. What questions do you have for me? Oh, just as that light goes out. What questions do you have for me all about uh, carbon fiber plates running shoes? That is the question of the day. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching today. I appreciate you. And onward and upward. Can't wait for the trail season, I must say so. All right, we're going to toss it back on the right two. My top three trail running shoes of 2019. That'll be on the right. And then we'll toss it back to my Hoka EVO Speed Goat full review. That'll be on the left. Oh, man. All right. Thanks for being here. See you. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.